know if you can see that, but that is snow on a full Yeti that I just busted my butt walking out here because Nashville is having a blizzard right now, which is not usual. And Tennesseans and Texans like myself, not prepped for that kind of stuff. So we beef it super hard on the way in. So my butt still, no, not really. <sighs> Rough start. Rough start to the day. What's up guys? Welcome to Graybox Nashville's YouTube channel. My name is Cody Hunter. I am the owner of Graybox Nashville. I'm a producer and engineer, but first and foremost, I am a drummer. Not sure if that makes you respect me more or less, maybe a little bit of both. Drums are the thing that got me into music. I picked them up in fourth grade, never put them down. And that is what kind of guided me into this world of music and production. And how do you capture drums? How do you record them? How do you make music in general? And like many, if not most, I started out learning how to record drums in less than ideal scenarios. Random closets, terrible boxy spare bedrooms with all parallel walls and no sound treatment. Eventually in a renovated basement that had its own quirks, the basement space studio, which eventually became Greybox. If you've ever recorded in any of those scenarios, you know that a killer room sound is not something you're typically working with. So after like 20 years of figuring out drums in those crummy scenarios, if I ever got to build my own studio from the ground up, it had to have a killer live room for drums. Tall ceilings, plenty of space, you know, the whole deal. So when we started designing gray box that was wish list item number one for sure we pushed and we made it happen the main open part of our live room is about 21 feet across about 19 feet deep you're including like the loft space in the length of it that's about 31 feet altogether the ceilings are 14 and a half feet on the north side gradually slant down to the south side at 14 feet so that's our live room I love it it's the best having a great drum room is one thing learning how to capture that drum drum room is a whole other thing. And that's honestly a journey I've been on nonstop since 2020 when we opened the studio. And it's something we're gonna be exploring together today in this video. We are gonna shoot out some different room mics in different positions and see how we like them. We are gonna do four different mic styles in four different positions on one kit, our 1962 Ludwig red sparkle kit with a superphonic snare. And we're just gonna try some stuff out, see how it sounds, see how we like it. We're gonna use a pair of Josephson C42s, cardioid small diaphragm condensers. Those are mounted up in the corners of our live room as a pretty wide spaced pair. Second, we're gonna have a pair of AKG 414s in Omni as a narrower spaced pair. Next, we're gonna go with a ribbon mic, the AEA R88 in Blumline. And finally, the dynamic mic you know and love, the S. M57 as an XY pair. Our kit is gonna be centered right out in front of our control room glass. Our small diaphragm Josephsons, like I said, they are mounted in the corners of our live room. The 414s, those are gonna be down on the live room floor in a bit narrower, set to Omni right out in front of the kit. The SM57 XY pair is gonna be right in the center of those, also in front of the kit, parallel with the 414s. And then finally, our R88 ribbon is gonna be in the loft above the kit looking down into the live room. Final thoughts, this is not the tutorial on how to get a drum room sound. That's not what we're trying to do here. This is just really simply us walking through a few different options in our space, seeing how they sound, bringing you along for the ride. Maybe we'll have a good time and learn something together. I think it'll be fun. All right, with all that said, let's dive in, check these out. All right, so we've got our kit recorded with all of our different room mics. I have switched them up a little bit. I've renamed them so we don't know what they are. It's just gonna be mic one, mic two, mic three, and mic four. And we're just gonna listen through these top to bottom, just dry before we process them with any sort of EQ or compression. We wanna hear how did they sound in the room, straight up dry, just like we placed them. This is mic one.
super cool. Okay, so first thoughts. This sounds to me like it sounds when I'm standing in the room just listening to the drum kit like normal. Very balanced, very much like my ear just naturally perceives the kit in the room when I'm standing in there. I feel like it captures the snare really well. The highs are nice, they're not too overwhelming. Getting some kick energy in there, not a ton of lows, maybe we need to boost those a bit. Overall, I'd say this is a really balanced tone. Great starting point. Let's try mic number two. Okay, mic two, right out of the gate, much narrower to me in a couple ways. Much more narrow in regards to the stereo feel, the width of it. Not as wide as our other one. It feels more like it's kind of sitting in the center of the stereo image. So that's notable. Secondly, narrower in regards to the frequency spectrum. Way more mid-rangey. Not a lot of lows, not a ton of the really high highs, very focused on that mid-range part of the frequency spectrum. The snare is coming out in a cool way. The lower highs of the cymbals are coming through in a way that isn't my favorite. Might wanna tame those some. But overall, this is a really cool mid-rangey kind of sound. I like it. Mic number three. Okay, right out of the gate, to me, the balance feels a little bit weird. It feels a little bit skewed to the left side. I'm getting a lot more snare, a lot more kick, just a lot more energy and volume out of the left side, and it's making everything feel a little bit imbalanced. And this happens sometimes, from my experience, whenever you're doing stereo mics in a room, whether it is just the position in the room that makes it feel or sound a little bit different, maybe the preamp was a little bit hotter on one side, whatever it might be, something's causing a volume or a tonal imbalance between the two. And I like to just address that before going any further, center it up a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is take our Avid trim plugin, real simple and we are going to unlink it so we can mess with the left and the right side independently of one another. And like I said, it sounds like the left side is a little bit hotter to me. So we're gonna play the track. We're just gonna bring the left side down, mess with the volume until it starts to feel a little bit more balanced to us, see if that helps anything. Okay, already feeling better to me. Just bringing that volume down gets the sides to be a little bit more matched. It's a good starting point. Another thing, it's a pretty wide image. Maybe it's worth it to bring these guys in just a little bit, narrow it up just a tad and see if that helps with our balance as well. Okay, cool, that's sitting, that's sitting a lot better to me. It's feeling a little bit more cohesive. Now that we've got that balanced, let's listen through from a tonal perspective. Whatever this mic is, is giving me the most low end information that we've experienced so far. First two mics, a little bit more mid-range centric. On this one, I'm hearing more of the kick. I'm hearing more of that low like body of the snare. On the first two, I'm getting some really good mid-range bark of the snare, but it's kind of lacking some body. This one really gives me that body, that kind of chest of the snare. Really cool. Also, the highs, a lot more pronounced in this one. Getting a lot of that crispier top end. In fact, I might even need to tame it a little bit before we start messing with any compression and stuff. Overall, I would say this is way more of a scooped option. Our lows are boosted a bit, our highs are boosted a bit, and naturally because of that, that mid range is just inherently a little bit more scooped out. Different sound, very cool, cool option compared to the rest so far. All right, last but not least, mic number four. Let's give it a listen. So much darker than the rest, right? I mean, I know I said the last one had the most low-end information. That was true at the time. 
this one kind of puts it to shame a little bit. So dark, so much body, really feeling that roomy rumble. The highs, way more mellow, right? Way more chilled out. Probably gives us a lot of space to boost those a bit, bring those back in. We'll see if that comes in pleasantly. Overall, really different sound, really cool, really digging that dark sound. Okay, so the big reveal. What mic is what? Mic number one is our 414s in Omni. And this makes sense to me, right? Because like I said, when we were listening to it, it sounded to me the way I hear the kit in the room most of the time, which makes a ton of sense because an Omni mic is listening in this really full orbed manner. It's not looking just directly at the kit and hearing that. It's listening to kind of the whole room, which is akin to how we, with our own ears, perceive sound within a room. We're listening, we're hearing everything coming from all different angles. Also the height, it's set at a similar height to where my ear is. So it's pretty cool that it gives a really clean, really balanced picture of what the kit sounds like in the room. I love that, really cool. Mic number two is, you guessed it, SM57. Also makes sense, right? So our 57s naturally way more mid-rangey, not a ton of low end, not a ton of super high end, very focused on the mid range, very snare dominant to me in a pleasant way, makes sense. Also, we noted that the width felt a lot more narrow as well. Our 57s are in that nice close XY pattern right in front of the kit. So it's gonna be naturally a narrower stereo image, but a cool one in its own way. Mic number three, our Josephson C42s mounted up into the corners of our rooms and the balance issues we were having with this makes sense to me as well. If you look at the placement of those mics in each corner of our room, one corner is very open, unhindered by anything. The other corner is tucked above our live room ISO. So there's a lot more space up there for sound to just get caught and rumble around. So it's not shocking that the tones that the two Josephsons capture in those distinct different corners is different from one another. So it's something to note. Overall, I like the way these sound. Like I said, that scooped sound. I love the body of the snare it gives me. Last but not least, mic number four, you guessed it, AEA R88 ribbon mic in the loft. Once again, totally makes sense. Ribbon mic's known for being much darker, having that really smooth top end. It's exactly what we experienced when listening to this take. A lot of cool low end tone from this take. I really love the way that this sounds. Okay, now that we know what each of these is, for reference, let's listen through them in shorter sections back to back so we can really more closely compare the sonic differences between our options. <laughs> Okay, so that's all of our room options, just dry, just straight up untouched. And a lot of the time, that's great. That's all you need. Just blending that mic in dry by itself is enough to give your drum mix that space, that ambience that you're looking for, and that's all you need. However, if you're like me, most of the time you're wanting to hit some room mics with at least a little bit of compression, if not a lot of bit of compression. Whether you're using it as an effect, whether you're just using it as a tool in your tool belt to control the rooms a bit, we want to see how these guys sound with a little bit of compression on them. For simplicity's sake, we are going to be using the same compressor on all of these tracks and comparing. We're going to go with the UAD 1176 Rev A, the blue stripe. Super cool compressor, really aggressive. We're gonna keep it really simple. We're gonna just put it on four to one, slowest attack, so we're not squashing the transient too quick, letting that the attack of it come through. Fastest release, so it lets go as soon as possible, really brings that energy of the room back, so it's really hitting it and getting out of there. We're just gonna start pushing level into this until it starts sounding really cool and feeling good. So let's hear how our 414 sound with some compression. It's gonna start out bypass.
super cool. Love how that's sounding. The character of the room is really starting to come out. Really awesome. Let's hear our 57s with the same compression. Same kind of deal. We're going to start over, start out by past, and we are going to fade it in slowly. I love the character that it gives the snare. It's really, really cool. One downside though, as we start to compress, the cymbals, which I already didn't love with that, those kind of low highs that can be harsh, pushing it into the compression really starts to bring those out in a not so great way. So I probably want to tame that just a little bit on the front end before it even hits the compressor. So let's grab an EQ. Put it before our compression, hunt around for where those like nasty, unpleasant sounds are and start to pull those out. <laughs> Killing a little bit of those harsh cymbals before they even get compressed. Love the way this is sounding. Love this, like I said, love the snare in this one. Let's try our C42s. body of the snare and the and the kick in that really comes out in such a cool way once you compress it big fan similar to the last one though the the crispy kind of symbols that were already borderline a little bit harsh just by themselves really starting to get out of control once we compress it so let's do something similar control them a little bit before we before they hit the compressor <laughs> better taming those guys up just a bit such a preference to honestly like some people don't want like any symbols in rooms they want them really dark some people won't cut it at all totally up to you totally a taste thing in a lot of ways let's check out our ribbon mic hear how that sounds compressed before we even get into it i know i'm gonna want to mess with the eq of this some so i'm gonna go ahead and put an ssl channel strip on here in prep all right same deal let's hear how this sounds bypassed adding it in and then pushing it in a little bit more Already sounding cool, but the more we push these already dark ribbons into this, the way a compressor works, it's gonna respond more heavily to those low frequencies. It just kind of starts to clog it up a little bit. It starts to feel a little bit sluggish. We don't want to kill the lows because that's part of the, the amazing tone of the ribbons, but maybe we control them just a little bit so it's not murdering the compressor. So I'm just gonna open the SSL EQ and right around 50 or 60 Hertz at a shelf, I'm just gonna duck that out until it starts to feel like it's a little bit more controlled. <laughs> Bringing some of those lows out, it's not overwhelming that compressor, but it's still super dark, 
super heavy, super cool like we want it, just not clogging up that compressor. I think that feels better. Another thing we could do, like we talked about, Ribbon Mic has a lot of mellow top end, so a lot of room to add some air back in in a really pleasant way. So maybe we throw a high band up at like 16 kilohertz, add back in some of those high frequencies, see how that feels. Feels pretty good. Last thing, kind of missing the snare a little bit. So maybe we take that upper mid-range band, hunt around a little bit and try to bring some of that back. Just some options there. Like maybe you like that with the EQ, maybe just that heaviness of the ribbon by itself compressed is what you're going for. Also cool, also great option. So that's it, that's all of our rooms with compression as well. Let's do the same thing, listen to those right back to back so we can really compare the tonal differences between them. <laughs> So <laughs> I was totally planning on doing an entirely different beat for this shootout. One of my favorite drum beats by one of my favorite drummers on a fantastic album. I was so rusty and so bad that I literally couldn't do a full pass of it without screwing it up. So we just pivoted and did <laughs> the beat we did, but I did want to pay homage to that. So let me know in the comments if you know what song this is from and who the drummer is. Ignore the suck because I'm rusty, okay? Forgive me. Let me know. Couple closing thoughts, takeaways. Point number one, consider the mix. 90% of the time in any real world application, you're not listening to these room mics in isolation. You gotta think about how they fit in with the broader context of the close mics of the drum kit, the overheads, how do they serve the drum mix? Beyond that, how does the drum room sound within the drum mix serve the broader mix of the song or production you're working on? Number two, start with a mic that gets you closer to your end goal. Maybe you know before you even put any mics on anything, hit record, that for this particular song, you are gonna want a more mid-rangey drum room sound. Maybe you already know that. Right out of the gate, just go ahead and pick something like the SM57s, something that's a little bit more narrow, rather than picking one of the other options like the ribbon, having to mangle that like crazy with EQ to get it to play the role that you want to within the song. Let the mic choice serve you earlier on in the process, so you're not having to work as hard after the fact. Three, don't be afraid to use multiple options. Maybe you love the way the snare sounds with the 57s, but you love the energy and the low end of the ribbon mic. Why not pick both of them? See if you can get a good blend, a good balance of the two, where you get the best of both worlds. And that's it for our shootout here at Greybox. Thank you for following along. Let us know in the comments how you like to record drum rooms. If we were totally off base and you think there's a better way to do it, we'd love to hear that. Also, let us know if you think there's another set of mics or positions we need to try try if we do another episode of this. Finally, if you enjoyed this video, it would mean a whole lot if you would like the video and subscribe to the channel for more studio content from Greybox Nashville. Once again, thanks for hanging out and we'll see you next time.